Okay, well, it's time now to check in on the latest business news. And for that, we're joined in studio by our business editor, Stephen Carroll. Stephen, going to start with news of massive job cuts, job cuts in General Motors. What's going on? That's right. Almost four, or more than 14,000 staff are set to be affected by the closure uh, of plants. Seven factories worldwide set to go. This part of a plan to save six billion dollars in costs as General Motors braces for a downturn in its home market of the United States. Now, the cuts represent 15% of GM's workforce. The US and Canada will bear the brunt of the closures. Uh, some of the plants being shut down are in politically sensitive states like Ohio and Michigan. President Trump saying that he's not happy with the move and called on the company to put something back in soon. Peter O'Brien has the story. The Oshawa Car Assembly Plant in Ontario, Canada, will be closing down as part of a massive restructuring at General Motors. I've been here 28 years. I've been through a closure in Scarborough. I've been through a closure in London. I moved my family twice for this company. And they do this to me. It's terrible. I'd like to work here tomorrow. I'd like to work here next year, you know. But, you know, I don't know. I'm just kind of hurting right now. General Motors, you better get back in there soon. The That's US Ohio. President and you Canadian Prime Minister have North both North expressed North disappointment North at the decision. Some of the plants being shut down are in the politically pivotal states of Ohio and Michigan, a region Donald Trump has promised to revive. Like a shot in the gut. I mean, it, this, is, this is bad news for everybody. Not only the folks that are working um, in the part supplying sector, but look at the grocery stores, right? Look at the restaurants, the doctor's offices, the hospitals. Some GM car models will be taken off the North American market in response to declining sales at home and changing consumer preferences. The company's also transitioning to more electric and autonomous vehicles. GM reported last month that its costs jumped because of Donald Trump's tariffs on steel and aluminium. But a spokesperson has said the latest decisions are not related to this. Now, ahead of his meeting with China's president, Donald Trump says that he plans to go ahead with increasing tariffs on Chinese imports from 10 to 25 percent. In an interview with The Wall Street Journal, Mr. Trump said that it was highly unlikely that he would accept Beijing's request to hold off on the tariff hike. He also said that if the U.S. doesn't do a deal with China, he'd impose duties on all remaining Chinese imports into the United States. Now, asked about what he wants to achieve in the talks, he said that China must address accusations of stealing intellectual property and open up China to the United States. Otherwise, he says he doesn't see a deal being made. And if it's not made, the US will be taking in billions and billions of dollars. Well, we know that markets have been watching the twists and turns of this trade war very closely because of the risks that it poses for business. Uh, looking at what's happening on the Asian markets earlier, not much of a reaction there. Uh, one of the commentary that's, that's floating around from Stephen Ennis from Rwanda saying that it doesn't sound like we'll see Donald the deal maker, but instead Trump the trade warrior at the G20 meetings. We'll have to see how that pans out later in the week. Perhaps investors, though, looking at the reaction, expecting this sort of language in the run-up to that meeting with President Xi. European markets opening pretty flat at the start of the day, just nudging into the green. Uh, London, uh, London actually turning red after the first couple of minutes of trading. Paris and Frankfurt uh, in the green as well. Shares in the travel firm Thomas Cook have plunged by more than 30% in London after it issued its second profit warning in two months. On the currency markets, the euro trading for $1.13 and 88.7 pence sterling. Now, a new economic study has calculated the impact the draft Brexit agreement would have on the British economy. The research carried out by academics at two London universities found the UK would be much worse off in a decade's time than if it stayed in the European Union. That's despite the savings from not paying EU membership fees. According to the report published by the think tank UK in a changing Europe, if the proposed deal is implemented, UK GDP per capita would be up to 5.5% lower after 10 years. And the budget, meanwhile, would see an impact of negative 1.8% of GDP. Compare that, though, to the situation if a deal isn't done and the UK finds it under WTO rules after the 29th of March next year. A much greater impact on the economy, minus 8.7% over 10 years uh, and minus 3% on the budget as well. And finally, for me, a restaurant in Nepal has hired some new local workers. Nello is the first digital restaurant in the country using robots to wait tables. Ginger, the waiter robot, is made by a local tech company. 
perhaps not the most efficient though solution to these things. <laughs> the robot's proving very popular with customers, but service a little slow as some of the younger diners try to get in Ginger's way as he goes about his job. <laughs> I have to say the expression is quite similar to a lot of waiters you see in Paris as well, so... <laughs> I wonder, do they, you know, what, what their mood is like? Are they abusive or not? <laughs> <laughs> Stephen Carl with that business update. Thanks a lot.